This is an electric Monroe L series adding machine, probably from the 1940s. It plugs in. This is an electric machine, but it's not really electronic in the modern sense. There's no electrical digital logic inside. You know, no little computer chips. The only thing the electricity does is drive a motor that turns the crank for you. What's so bad about turning the crank yourself? I don't know. This one's electric. This is my 30th episode and the first one with an electric machine. Actually, I have several electric machines, but this is the only one that really works. These old machines are full of precision gears and springs, so they can get jammed pretty easily. When you add in an electric motor to the mix, that only increases the number of points where it could break. But this little guy is working perfectly. I did a video about the mechanical L-series machine a while back, and this thing looks almost the same. It's a pretty impressive machine, so you might want to check out that other video first. On the mechanical L series, you had three cranks. This one for adding and subtracting. You go forward to add and backward to subtract. This one to clear the two registers. And this one to shift the digits. The electric has the same clearing and shifting cranks, but the adding and subtracting crank has been replaced by these plus and minus buttons. Otherwise, it works exactly like the L series. You type in a number and hit plus, and it adds into the display here, and adds one to the counter. You can even hold the button down, and it'll keep on adding. Use the counter and the digit shifter to do multiplications and divisions. Like, if I want to do this multiplication, it looks like this. If you did watch my video about the mechanical version of this machine, now is about when you start to wonder, is this one really any better? Does that electric motor really make a difference? On the electric, you do this. And on the mechanical, you do this. It's not really a big deal. Is the electric any faster? Well, let's have a little race side by side. I'm going to do another big multiplication on both sides and see which one's faster. So I guess the electric really is faster. After doing these little tests, I can see two things better about the electric. Number one, this is probably just because I'm an amateur, but I always forget which way to turn the crank on the mechanical. One way adds and the other way subtracts, but I do it the wrong way about a third of the time. On the electric, the buttons are clearly labeled and it's not a problem. Number two, on the mechanical machine, you spin it all the way around in one or the other direction. The crank does sort of lock after you complete a full rotation, but it doesn't really lock hard. If it locked really hard, then it'd be harder to start the cranking. So it's pretty easy to accidentally turn it too far or not far enough. When that happens, your number won't fully add and the machine will jam. It's not a big deal since you can just jiggle the crank and it'll lock in at the bottom, but it makes you stop and adjust. None of that's a problem on the electric because it's just the buttons. So is the electric really better than the mechanical? I guess it is, but not much better. And together with the fact that the electric motor can fail, I'd say they're about the same. But back in the day, the electric machines probably had a special kind of mystique to them. I found an old magazine ad for Monroe that wasn't really focused on the machine, just the idea of adding machines. Like, people still needed to be convinced that computing machines were actually useful. So having electric machines might have helped convince skeptical people that this would really be worth their money. Oh, did I mention the silly ethnic stereotype taking up half the page? Clever Chinese. Old John Chinaman sets his yellow fingers flying. Ooh. Ooh. Anyway, here's another problem I have with these old electric machines. They got a power cord. On these Monroe machines, the cord was removable, which was nice, but that means usually when you find them today, they're missing the cord. And without the power, this thing doesn't do anything. There's no way to manually turn the crank yourself. The cords they use are just like modern electric cords, you know, some wires covered in a soft plastic insulation. But on the original cords, that soft plastic is now like 50 years old, so even if you do have the original wire, it's unlikely to be in good shape. The Monroe machines use their own design of wire connector, and nobody makes one today that'll fit. 
Looks like it would fit this kind of computer wire, but those pegs are just a little bit too big. I tried it like that, but it doesn't work for some reason. You can usually get an old authentic Monroe cord on eBay, but I decided to make my own. This is probably kind of dangerous, so don't try this at home unless you know what you're doing. Needless to say, I don't. The original wire that these things use is just a wire. It's not like an AC adapter or a voltage converter or anything like that. So all you need to make your own wire, you just got to get these two guys connected to these two guys. So I bought the cheapest extension cord I could find and cut the female end off, stripped out the two wires. You could just connect them to the machine with alligator clips and be done with it, but then you'd have exposed wires and that would really be dangerous. So I got some snap-in wire connectors that look like this. The female end was just slightly too big for the pegs in the machine, but I just squeezed it a little with some pliers and it got it to fit perfectly. Then I got a little piece of PVC pipe and put the connectors in there and filled the whole thing with hot glue. The pipe was a little too big, so I shaved it down a little. But it seems to work great. Probably cost me under $5. But seriously, I don't really know what I'm doing here. Remember kids, always have your parents help. And keep this thing out of the bathtub. Mm -hmm.